imagine growing up poor in the depression. You're last in line. No cake for you. The seeming kindness of strangers is anything but. It'd be enough to break anybody. Anybody but her. Whenever she said no, whenever she made a firm decision, whenever she held her worth, a new realm of life would open up, as if by magic. Chicago, New York, the White House, for the one who dares to claim their inner majesty, the world will open its doors. Will you kindly roll out the red carpet and don your Sunday best? Because today, we're having tea with Louise Hay. This will be an everlasting love. This will be the one I've waited for. This will be the first time anyone has loved me. Oh, oh. Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. And welcome back to the Masters Series. Today I'm so excited to share this master with you. It's Louise Hay. I have been such a fan of Louise Hay for so long. My mum gave me her book and DVD a very long time ago and I have been a really big fan ever since. And if you've ever seen a meditation by me, if you've ever clicked on one of my meditation videos, you'll know that I quote her in the description. I always put a little line that says, well, it's a dedication, it's not a quote. I put a dedication to Louise Hay in every one of my meditation videos. So she's probably the most named famous person on this channel, actually. So now you finally get to meet her through astrology through the lens of astrology. And that's really cool because she loved astrology. She would consult astrologers and numerologists and palm readers and handwriting readers and all kinds of different people. She loved all of this stuff. So this is one that I've been meaning to do for quite some time. It's really interesting when I was doing the research for this episode well when I was doing the research I discovered she loves tea and I've got my herbal tea of choice here I have passion fruit tea which is an Aussie classic um, I know that she gave up caffeine some years into her healing journey so that was pretty easy to find out but the other thing that I found out about that was really very interesting was her tough childhood which I always knew was very tough but I didn't know that it coincided with the Great Depression. And when I clicked through the years, as I was looking at Louise through my astrological system, I could see that Saturn moved into Capricorn, I think it was in 1931. I'll put it on the screen for you so you'll be able to see. And that was when she was very young. I think she was five or six years old or something like that. So her childhood coincided with the Great Depression, and I was just amazed to see Saturn moving into Capricorn because I was like, wow, we have got that right now. And in my Saturn in Capricorn video that I did at, I think, the very start of this year, I did talk about the fact that there would be redundancies, there would be, that Saturn would be scrutinizing leadership in quite a heavy way. That was a big point that I made. But I also did make the point that um, you know money could become tight, job losses, uh, large businesses closing down, things like that. And of course, that's what was happening when Louise Hay was very young. So why don't we get stuck in to the script here? I'm just going to read it out as I do because there's a lot of fine detail and I've been putting this together over, well, this one I've spent a little bit of extra time on, a couple of days. So I've uh, really enjoyed um, studying the life of Louise Hay. So why don't we begin? All right, well, here we go. Everyone loves a good rags to riches story. But the extreme lows in this one are too shocking to tell. Suffice to say, Louise came from a childhood where torture and abuse were the norm. And this is certainly a case where a combination of all her internal resources and the starlight of her life were needed to get her out. Jupiter Mahadasha is where life took a turn. 
And I do believe that whenever Jupiter reached out his hand to pull her out of difficulty, she took it with enormous gratitude and courage in her heart. In 1943 or thereabouts, she left for Chicago for a month and did not return for over 30 years. Jupiter Mahadasha was also to gift her a modeling career in New York, an English gentleman for a husband, dinner at the White House, and a meeting with royalty. After all the Nietzsche Bunga Raj Yoga highs provided by Jupiter, Saturn Mahadasha brought Louise Hay back to earth for a while. This was the Mahadasha that delivered a divorce and put the high school dropout back in school where she studied voraciously. But Jupiter never stopped watching over her. His gift-giving powers worked even here. During Saturn-Jupiter period, Louise published her first book, Heal Your Body, in 1976. Next up, we have the Mahadasha whose lord is debilitated, and that is Mercury. However, as Mercury and Mercury's Lord Venus are exchanging energy, we have a nice Nietzsche Bhanga Raj Yoga in place. I tend to think this example shows how Nietzsche Bhanga works the very best. To me, its movement is like that of a springboard. When you bounce on the plank, you go down low in order to achieve the terrific uplift as it flicks you high in the air. For Louise, the bounce down was a diagnosis of cancer, followed by the ride of a lifetime, which included a total natural healing, the giving away of all her healing secrets, and the incorporation of what was to become a global powerhouse in publishing, and dozens of international accolades, including a much coveted spot on the New York Times bestsellers list. Her publishing company would go on to produce countless more New York Times bestselling authors, and all their work would go on to reach a hand to anyone struggling in life, just as Jupiter had done for Louise all those years ago. What I love best about Louise's Nietzsche Bhanga Raj Yoga experience is that she took millions of people with her, interestingly, all from the comfort of their own homes, Mercury in Libra, fourth house of home. One can't talk about Louise Hay without mentioning the bedrock of all her teachings, self-love. I believe her mastery of this subject and its application in self-healing comes directly from the planet of love herself, who is debilitated in Louise's chart. Gifts bestowed by a debilitation may come after racking up some scars and can produce something of a wounded healer. Who knows how to heal best because she's been there. The discoveries of this Venus were communicated through Louise's books, Mercury-Moon combination being a classic conjunction that produces writers. And interestingly, these books were also guaranteed a long shelf life, with the sun standing alone in nine of her Varga charts, including the D60. One of the things that frustrates me about critics of this stunning human being is that they have no idea how hard it can be to implement her simple teachings, how she owned the pattern within herself that made her miss out on cake at school, how she declined surgery during the height of her cancer. These are just two examples. Where did this level of courage and ability to take ownership of everything in her life, past, present and future, come from? That glorious Mars, who forms a Ruchaka Yog in 10th house Aries. A good Mars separates the men from the boys, separates those who do from those who do not. The creators from the critics. Just look at the Shadbala on this Mars. It is literally off the chart. Crack open the bonnet on this life and you'll see Louise's powerful Mars is like an AK-47 in the place where most people are only packing a Saturday night special. Please don't ask me how I came up with that. I read a lot. There's no question about it. She had a steely will, the kind that could put man on the moon. Through studying this magnificent role model, whom I'll look up to forever, I discovered something very important about what a chart represents. Far from being a place to lay blame for all that isn't going right, the Vedic way teaches us 
that a chart contains ideals that we must live up to. Well, Louise Hay takes all this one step further. When she consulted astrologers, she deliberately chose to see the good in her chart. And I believe all that self-development work shrunk the space between the top of her head and the stars that circled above. Louise, you wore the stars in your chart like a crown and you inspire me to do my inner work so I can one day do the same. To quote Natalie Cole's famous song, which is in the title and credits of this video, I'm so glad I found you in time and I'm so glad that you rectified my mind. Long may your life's work live on like a sun that never sets and is more than content to stand alone. So I hope you enjoy my overview of Louise Hay. I haven't talked about so many things in her chart, like the Gaja Kesari Yoga that's forming and the Chandra Mangal Association. And there's lots of things to talk about. So if you would like to talk about those things, please drop a comment below. Uh, I only give myself two A4 pages when I write the script. That's why I can only fit so much in. There is a lot more to say, but please feel free to comment below. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Sunshine into my life And you fill me with happiness I never knew You gave me more joy than I